we are here with Charles Barkley, as we are every year here at the American Century, because, Charles, you are a mainstay. You're probably one of the main events here at the, at the American Century. <laughs> Unfor- is that a fair assessment? Uh, unfortunately, yes, that's a fair assessment. But you know what? This is a wonderful week. The people of Lake Tahoe in this area, they roll out the red carpet. Uh, this is the first thing I put on my schedule every summer. It's just a great week of fun and camaraderie with all the other players and the fans. And we know that this is a priority for you because this same time last year, you were with us on this show. You had just gotten back from speaking at the Sun Valley Allen & Co. Media yeah. Conference. You were talking about a lot of different things there, social income, injustice, that sort of thing. So, so take us through. Have, have your views evolved over the course of the past year? How do you still feel about the current environment that we're in with regard to the political and economic situation for Americans in general? Well, the political situation just in the crapper. Uh, what these Democrats and Republicans are doing to this country is a disgrace. But to get back to your original question is, America is the greatest country in the world, but what has really become rich people against poor people. And unfortunately, poor people are at a huge disadvantage. They're in the worst neighborhoods. They go to the, the worst schools, and we wish them luck. And then we complain when they don't do better. And my number one goal is to do everything possible I can to help poor people. Uh, right now, i got a couple of things uh, going on in Alabama. Uh, I gave black women a million dollars to do IT startups. I'm really excited about that. And also, I gave young black men a uh, million dollars to do to learn to be carpenters, electricians, and plumbers so they can make a great living. Uh, so inequality is a big problem. And, it, and listen, the, cat, the, the toothpaste is out of the tube. America is the greatest place in the world, but it's rich people against poor people. Now, th- there's also a, a lot of stuff happening in the world of sports right mm-hmm. now. Uh, from a controversial standpoint, we, we know that the NFL has some issues that it's trying to work through, national anthem protests, possibly viewership issues. We know mm-hmm. that the NBA is also dealing with some things on its own. So, so as you look at the National Basketball Association right now, do you feel as though it's in a good place growth-wise going forward? Well, it's in a good place, but as long as we have the, the quote-unquote the super teams and all the stars want to play together, uh, it, it's working right now, but it's not, uh, not going to work in the long run because at some point the fans are going to say, why am I going to watch your product if my team has got no chance of winning? So, yeah, it, it's great for right now. It's great for the Golden State Warriors and things like that. But at some point the fans, who are the most important thing we have, they're going to say, my team is not competitive. The NBA is not competitive. Uh, it's not going to work in the long run. So that's the biggest problem we got. Yeah, it's a short term. It's, it's going to be all right, but it won't work in the, over, in the big long run. All right, Sarah, Mike, I know that you guys got some questions of your own for Sir Charles over here. Yeah, Charles, uh, how are you? Mike, uh, back here in New York. Um, you know, on the subject of the super teams, obviously we have to add the Lakers into that, don't we, uh, with LeBron going there? And I wonder what you no, think we don't. does. No, we don't. We don't. No, that no we don't. The, the Lakers are not a super team. So this is no, so the Lakers, West is Lakers not a two-team are, race. Tell us how it's going to shake out. Well, in fairness, I think uh, the West has become a one-team race because the, the Houston Rockets lost Trevor Ariza, who I think is the most underrated player in the NBA, uh, Trevor Ariza. So now, uh, and the Warriors just got Boogie Cousins. I think they are now head and shows above every team in the NBA. The Rockets were really close last year. But like I say, they're really going to miss Trevor Ariza. But... Uh, so, uh, so I take the Rockets out of the equation. And now the Lakers, listen, LeBron is amazing, amazing, amazing. But the Lakers are probably the fifth or sixth best team in the Western Conference right now. What about Kawhi Leonard? What if he goes there? Then do they become a super team? Oh, they, listen, first of all, he's not going there. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, listen, mm-hmm. Kawhi Leonard's a great, great player. But I don't understand from a San Antonio Spurs standpoint why you would trade probably the third best basketball player in the world, trade him to play with the best basketball player in the world, and have to compete against him for the next five to ten years. That makes no sense whatsoever. So I don't see the Spurs trading Kawhi Leonard to the Lakers. I would be totally shocked. (laughs) <laughs> Love talking a little basketball, Charles. But, you know, Dom referenced the, the NFL protests, and I just wanted to, to get your thoughts. The intersection of sports and politics right now seems much higher than it's been. A lot, a lot of those lines are getting blurred between the Eagles and the NFL and Steph Curry and LeBron James. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's, it's this president, or is it more social activism in sports, or what? Well, I think it's a combination of of everything you just said. Listen, I think that, listen, I'm a Democrat. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the president. I respect the office. I think anytime you get an opportunity to go to the White House, you should accept that. 
unfortunately, this situation we got now where people don't want to go to the White House because of the president, I think it's sad and unfortunate. Listen, the president of the United States is a, is a big deal. Uh, I wouldn't want anybody not going there when President Bush was there or President Obama. It's an honor and a privilege to go to the White House. Like I say, I'm not a big Trump fan, but I think if you're invited to the White House, you should go.